Hello and welcome to the Let's Talk Leadership podcast, The Culture Edit Reloaded. I'm Sandra Patel, founder and CEO of Transition Partners. This season, I'm flying solo as I sit down with international leaders to discuss their leadership journeys and how they have embedded a thriving and positive culture. Morning. Hello and welcome back to our Let's Talk Leadership podcast. I'm Sandra Patel and I'm di- delighted today to be back recording. So today we have our wonderful guest speaker called Nicole, who is Head of Engineering of Scalable Capital. Scalable Capital are based in Munich, Berlin and London. And am I right in saying, Nicole, that you're based in Cologne? That's correct. I am based in Cologne. Fantastic, brilliant. So we haven't spoken before, um, but I've heard lots of great things about you and I've had a a little um, kind of look at your LinkedIn profile and and your background and obviously see that you've got a wealth of experience. So I'm really pleased to have you on the podcast today um, because I'd love to find out more about you, your background, how you got to where you are today Um, and um, to be able to share those experiences and any challenges that you've had along the way, any lessons that you've learned along the way, which I'm sure there's been plenty. Um, So first of all, it'd be really good to just tell our audience a little bit more about you and just give them kind of a five, yeah, if we can just kind of do a, a five minute sort of quick overview of your background and how you got to where you are today. All right. Um, yeah. Hello, Sandra. Hi. Uh, I I actually have uh, started my career twenty years ago. Um, I am originally coming from Belarus, and okay. uh, my my first uh, my first job was uh, at the chocolate factory, and uh, I am a big lover of chocolate, so I couldn't work there too long. <laughs> whenever, whenever you have the smell everywhere, it's just not possible to to stay away. And either you have to stop loving it or you have to leave. So I decided to leave, and um, that was my first uh, first job. And I started as a system administrator. I was dealing with the servers, with infrastructure, with networking. And then over the time, I um, I have tried myself in uh, multiple different uh, roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, also was developing. Uh, quite actively um, had my own uh, little company uh, there oh. in my hometown. Uh, it was an agency in early 2000 when we were building software for the clients uh, in Europe, uh, yeah. on, on the US, something like that. After a while, I uh, decided to move on um, and start working more in the, with the European clients and I didn't want actually to to be an agency anymore. It's uh, a bit exhausting for for me, mm. and I wanted to be uh, part of the product uh, product journey when you can develop the product and uh, support and grow. And I, I started uh, I started a company. I joined the company in uh, Estonia. Um, it was a um, uh, recruitment uh, company. Uh, All right. Okay. Interesting. Um, actually, from from for many years, I have to tell you that I, I tried myself in multiple different industries. Yeah. Um, it was it was nice and interesting to learn different uh, businesses, different mm-hmm. industries, and more important, to meet so many different people. Mm-hmm. So I was more working with uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Then I came to Berlin. Uh, there I used to be. Uh, I lived there like four years, and uh, mm-hmm. for that time, I also had a chance to be a part of Journey of Delivery Hero. Um, mm-hmm. For we've been working for UK market mainly, the company uh, called Hungry House, and uh, there we were managing um, thousands of uh, restaurants across across the UK. Um, it, uh, delivery Hero is. Uh, or at least was, and I believe still is the the biggest uh, food delivery platform. It is, yeah, uh, I believe, yeah. It, it was an interesting journey, and I met a lot of people there. Then there were also a few companies in Berlin, and uh, then I moved to Cologne, where I joined um, DHL. Uh-huh. Um, they spin off the startup called Saludo, 
and uh, we've been developing a platform for logistic industry for the freight forwarding business and I also had a chance to uh, contribute and launch together with other uh, DHL companies mm -hmm. a worldwide uh, platform mydhli.com my and um, after that um, I, I joined uh, Scalable where I am working as the head of engineering and managing the, the core tribe uh, with uh, five different teams uh, with the main mission to enable our internal software developers um, for uh, financial product for development. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, brilliant. Um, a very uh, varied background there um, from working in a chocolate factory to um, having your own business to recruitment um, back into into tech on the product side. So that's, that's really interesting. Um, I think it'd be really interesting because a lot of what we do as a business as well is um, when working with clients and um, having people on our podcast and a lot of, like we do a lot of meetups and events and things as well, is there's a big focus and drive on um, sort of building that bridge and gap in the um you know the the digital divide and the the gap in the market for people entering into tech at a young age um and you said and, and i thought it was really interesting because you said you moved over um you moved in and you started as a an administrator in a chocolate factory how did you actually how did you get into tech and how did you find you know, were there any challenges around that? And yeah, how, what, what were your experiences? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I think uh, my parents probably impact a lot. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, um, my father was um, working quite close with uh, computers. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I think I enjoy that. I, I, I like seeing him doing that. He had multiple different ideas and yeah, probably he encouraged me and motivated to, to jump in. Obviously there were no internet uh, widely popular on or accessible back in the days for me. Yeah, yeah. And there were only books. Um, then I, I got my own PC and then the journey started. Uh, How I old were you when you got your own PC? Sorry? How old were you when you got your own PC? My own PC, I got on the, I think, close to my 20. But before that, I used to use uh, friends, um, other different sources, clubs, whatnot, uh, computer clubs, where you could go and, uh, and play around. Not necessarily only games playing, but also you can break things uh, and learn by that. So I, I broke a lot. Uh, <laughs> But that was the way to learn. And yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you have to break a few things and get a few things wrong, don't you, to learn. Fantastic. Brilliant. So, um, so it, within um, leadership, um, you've, uh, is it around 10 years experience that you've got in, within leadership? Um, what would you say your biggest lesson um, has been so far and, and how did you or what did you learn from, from that lesson? It's an interesting question. I think there have been so many different lessons. Um, I think throughout the life you, you're constantly having lessons. It's so yeah. difficult to, to say which lesson is the biggest one. But yeah. I think <clears throat> one of the biggest or most important part maybe is communication. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're growing in your career, as long as you um, involve more and more in bigger projects with more people involved. I think one of the uh, interesting lessons that you you need to speak less and listen more, but whenever you say less, everything needs to be crystal clear and sharp. I, I don't think that it's, it's the case everywhere, uh, but still it's kind of a North Star. Um, I think it makes sense uh, and I learned that to rather find um, to to find a way to express your thoughts very clear, so communication is definitely a, a, a big lesson for me. Yeah. I think uh, being op being kind of open for adaptation, for changes, be adaptable, 
since the the industry is tech industry absolutely uh, rapidly moving industry like every bloody day year many things change in framework technologies uh industries also change and since we we are developing mainly for business therefore yes being open certainly big big lesson maybe the if i would say i, I think that there, there, there are many many different lessons but maybe the biggest Maybe it could be um, something about empathy. I think at the end of the day, as a leader, you're leading people, not machines. Um, and that means, I think, empathy, probably, I would say for me, would be the biggest one since um, to feel, to understand what people feel, mm -hmm. to understand their perspective. Uh, I think it helps. It helps a lot to also understand their motivations, the strengths, the weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it helps to to foster an environment with a trust. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of a very much fundamental layer where which you need to build first. Mm -hmm. And empathy probably would be the, the biggest contributor to that, in my opinion. Yeah, fantastic. So communication, empathy, um, and being open, um, absolutely agree. And I think communication, communication, I feel is I've I've been in I'm trying to think how long I've been in a leadership role for now, maybe going on fifteen years. I still haven't got it right. <laughs> um, it's a constant learning. Um, you know, because the other thing, and then you touched on the empathy side, is is understanding your people, you, you, your your team, and your people around you evolve and change. And we change as well, don't we, as we grow and um, develop inside work, outside work, it all impacts the other. Um, and I think it's, it's communication, I feel, for me, is one of the biggest ones to, um, to get right. But it's to be open and continuously um, work on that communication piece. Is there anything that you've, you feel that you've... Um, I don't know if it's a course or a book that you've read or something that you feel really helped you from the communication side that you could share. I don't know, difficult to say. I think there are many, many different books, podcasts, for example, like that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> different, um, different sources, networking, mm. uh, communities, mentorship, you you may be lucky and get a great manager one time in your life and you can learn from him. You may not be lucky enough and not have the one, so you need to find another way. Uh, I, d I wouldn't say that there is one single way that I can recommend to anybody. But I think that uh, maybe maybe the, 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 the most important is maybe self-reflection. Mm. It's maybe that you need to understand who you are yeah. and how should you deal with people, how should you treat people. At the end of the day, it's all about them, right? It's all, all about people. Yeah. Maybe that is the strategy I would choose, I would recommend right now. And I, uh, one thing that I always say as well is, um, I always say, you know, am I treating someone how I would want to be treated? Absolutely. Um, I think that's really important. And also... I think you touched on it before is understanding people um because no one size fits all does it like everyone's different and so it's understanding their motivations and their drivers and what what, what does and doesn't work for them um, even though we all have the same legs and arms it seems like the same but no we're not the difference no. is huge in fact yeah yeah fantastic um Brilliant. So um, I'd like to move on to talk a bit about um, remote leadership, um, because obviously we've, well, we're nearly three years in since COVID um, hit us all. And um, I mean, us as, a, us as a business, we probably did, I think we allowed one day a week any prior to that working from home. Um, but obviously there's been a huge shift since then across the globe. Um, lots and lots of many businesses are hiring remotely. Um, there's m many more leaders out there that are managing teams remotely who, um, you know, who, who didn't have the experience of coaching and managing and, and training remotely. Um, so 
I'd be under, I'd, I'd be keen to understand because I, I believe you manage. Um, obviously, you said earlier that you manage. Is it three teams? Two or three? I can't remember. Currently, I have five different teams. Oh, okay. But uh, throughout the career, I managed remotely teams like all the time. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, how do you? Um, and they're on on, sh on and offshore currently. Um, so, how do you build personal relationships and connections? Um, with them in a remote environment? I, well, from one side, I would say that uh, there's no difference. Would mm. it be remote or not remote? There is no big difference. I think maybe, I mean, the principle will stay the same. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about the same. The only tooling is different. The approach may be different. The perspective or the kind of the way you tackle that challenge, that's true. But in, in essence, it's all about the same. I wouldn't uh, differentiate it too much. Nevertheless, it's worth to mention that uh, communication becomes much more even important uh, compared to the, to the uh, on-site setup. Um, yeah, regular check-ins, uh, regular calls, team, uh, team meetings, share, sharing more thoughts, listening to feedback, I think that becomes bigger part, bigger chunk of the, your of your day. Certainly, recognition and uh, appreciation becomes much more important as well. You don't have any more chance to come in a second to somebody and say, "Hey, well done," or something like that. You need to call. You need to have an appointment, more or less, and therefore uh, chat, messaging, meetings again. But recognition, appreciate people, they work. Uh, at the end of the day, send simple email, I don't know about that. Uh, that also helps a lot. Um, yeah, we do have some, um, what would I say, like team building events maybe. Yes, they're virtual, but we also do non-virtual. So we still kind of not uh, working from different continents. So it's more or less possible and feasible to go together. Yeah. Not very much often, but still uh, the, this option exists. Yeah. I think maybe uh, also, I think it's valid also for online or for offline, sorry, this um, like little bit, uh, you know, of um, understanding more about about uh, your, your people's interests, yeah. hobbies, yeah. like a little bit personal touches, you may say, something like that is also, I think, very much motivating and helping in fostering the right culture. Mm -hmm. Transparency, absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'll give you an example. We, uh, in my current um, team, and I was doing that before as well, but in my current team, we have a calendar. Mm -hmm. um, in that calendar, every team member, including me, myself, go there at the end of the day and pick the right color for the day, how the day was. Mm -hmm. We have uh, red, awful day. We have orange, not good one. We have yellow, yellow, normal, good. And we have green, awesome. Yeah. And everybody does that every day. At the end of the day, we go there and leave the color. So we have day, uh, we have names and days. And that helps not only me, that helps everyone um, to, to first of all, create this transparency and trust. Yeah. It's not a reporting. It's not a complaining tool mm -hmm. it's rather a tool for enable faster feedback mm -hmm. and if for example any of my employees have a red day on next day i will have time slot with 10 15 minutes and we will talk about that we will talk to find yeah. out what has I happened love Sorry? i love that i love it that's brilliant Thank you. Uh, I love it as well. I, I really like, like it uh, and, and they like it uh, because of at the end of the day, uh, we, I, I want to know what has happened, why it was like that. Maybe it was a project, uh, you know, deadline, um, effort, maybe something personal, which I cannot solve, but I can hear at least listen. And at the end of the day, I'm asking also, what can we do differently to, you know, to avoid this? What should we change? Uh, Maybe we shouldn't change anything. Life is life. But still, <laughs> at the end of the day, we have a chance to talk about that. Uh, once, there was a really interesting occasion. I also put red days. I also, person, a <laughs> human, <laughs> uh, I can have big, uh, difficult days. And uh, 
I left once uh, a red color and one of my direct reports asked me about that. How do I feel? That was really amazing. That's nice. really yeah. yeah. Oh, that's lovely. I really like that as well because I think it um it encourages um it encourages everybody each day to reflect on their day. Um and I think that we can all get into the trap of we've all got busy lives. Um, and especially more so as we get older, we you know if we if we, if we have families and you know rushing off to pick the kids up and, and you know sort dinner out and get them to bed etc. And it's like eight nine o'clock before you get to stop for the day. Um, so I think that's really important to encourage reflection um, daily rather than um, you know lots of lots of teams and lots of companies have regular stand-ups or weekly meetings and things like that but it's it's keeping it in the day as well um which i think is um, a really good idea might might look to implement that at transition partners i like that one thank you no problem but but the beauty is that the, the, the person when he because we know the difference between these daily or regular check-ins because first of all on the day it's still hot and you know everything you remember it's not a weekly yeah. check-in it's just on that spot kind of yeah. and at the same time what is important is when the person leaves the feedback nobody's around nobody asks nobody's pushing him yeah. he's with himself i think that helps a lot yeah and you're more likely to get more of an open honest exactly. how they're feeling yeah perfect um brilliant so um I think it'd be good to sort of move more on to, I think, I feel like we've covered quite a lot around the remote hybrid um, work setting. How do you, um, be good to talk a bit more, I think, about like culture and like the planning side around how, you know, the impact on teams and employees and their future and, and well-being um, as well. So how do you balance the planning for the planning for the future but then at the same time, being present for your employees. Um, and I think, as I said earlier, and we've kind of touched on, is keeping it in the day. Uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's absolutely challenging. Um, yeah, I think, <clears throat> let me tell you what we do. Uh, mm -hmm. So first of all, I believe that um, you need to unload the mind. You can't keep all the time things in your mind yeah. because of then your operational kind of um, area is busy with uh, future things. You need to completely unload that and make it empty, maybe not empty the right word, to make it free <laughs> uh, for other things. And um, for example, we, we, we plan ahead. I, I collect my team um, kind of two, two months before the end of the year and we start planning for the entire year. We collect uh, ideas, features, inefficiencies, tech depth, uh, initiatives, whatnot, everything into one kind of big jar. Mm -hmm. Then we sit together and prioritize. We go through the list and we believe, uh, first of all, we not just define what it is, but also kind of you, you give a broader description. Why do you think it's important? Mm. And then uh, together we prioritize. Once the exercise is done, we have a clear plan for the next year. It doesn't mean that this plan will work out completely, but still you have the plan. Therefore, you don't have to think what to do next. And yeah. then one part of your mind, unload it. Awesome. Next, uh, you, you try to stay focused on present mm -hmm. because of the future will come. Like future moves without your wish, right? It's yeah. time, you cannot control, it comes. And it's already planned. So mm -hmm. you focus on your current, on your present. And then it depends on your style, depends on who you are, on your level and what you do. I am usually prefer to be quite hands-on um, leader. And I like to work with people. Therefore, I like to know what's going on. I stay present and focus. Um, and that helps also, I think, team that motivates them and encourage them because of we kind of we know what's going on that also by itself just that I think enables collaboration because of multiple teams in my tribe they um, they more or less have very same mission mm -hmm. and therefore maybe we tackle that mission from different angles 
because we have, let's say, security team and we have platform engineering teams and also software development teams. But at the end of the day, it's all about the same and being staying focused and present, having the same mission and have a plan ahead. That helps a lot, I think. Um, maybe I should say about uh, self-care a few words. Yeah. I think that uh, in remote setup, that's especially crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> no one will come to you. No one will come to your desk and call for, uh, to kitchen for, for the coffee. And that's very important. And that's what I try to uh, also share to my uh, em employees and ask them also to do the same for, for their team members that um, we need to be much more conscious uh, about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to sit all day long. It's very easy. It's easy to dive into one kind of task and sink there. Yeah, maybe you have multiple tasks and you switch the context, but it's again very much easy to forget about multiple, multiple things. Yeah. The worst part, what I've learned, at least in my last uh, or few last my jobs, also shared, um, I heard it from people who are much more experienced than uh, my, myself. And I like what they said. Uh, I, I fully agree. I think it's resonated a lot with me. The stress when you feel it's too late. Whenever you feel it, the train is gone. That's it. You now kind of firefighting. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you want to manage your stress, mm -hmm. you have to work out on this kind of self-care ship, something like that. You need to think about yourself a bit more, control mm -hmm. yourself a bit more, make sure that you have exercises, food, rest, everything yourself. Nobody will interrupt you. You are mm -hmm. alone, kind of. You may say you're not alone. There is a big team, but they're all remote. And therefore, in a remote environment, I think that's the, the point when people start in kind of burning out and yeah. you need to be very very careful here i was i'm glad you brought that up actually because i was going to ask you um i know i didn't i know we didn't give you that as a question but um it, it's just something that's just come to me and it's it's quite um relevant for me um at the moment as well and 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 for a lot of people out there i mean I, i've recently been asked to do a talk actually around burnout um, for a client of ours and, and to their whole team um, because it's something that's come up as um, recent feedback within that particular business um, and you know at the, at the minute the market is getting tougher it is you know it is getting tougher there's a lot of pressure um, on businesses there's the whole um, challenges around um, you know the, the impact of the remote working to certain businesses and industries as well um, so I was going to ask you, being in the role that you're in, head of engineering, um, and, and going back a little bit to the um, the thing you've implemented around the colours of the day and how you're feeling at the end of the day, if you're having, if you end the day or you wake up and you're feeling red, um, you know, things have built up for you, um, perhaps you're stressed, or perhaps it's something completely non-work related but you know that hand on heart you know that that day you may not your team may not get the best version of you can you and do you um you know do you have the I'm trying to think of the right word do you have do you feel you have the power to recognize that and if you do what do you do well from one side uh Maybe it's stupid, but smartwatch can help. Smartwatches, then uh, they tell you, uh, at least I, I look around about the amount of sleep I have, sleep hours I have. Yeah. For me, I feel it's very important if I sleep enough. That helps a lot. But you're right, there are things happening beyond that and without your control. Mm. Can I recognize that I'm in a not very productive mood? I believe I can, uh, but I will do everything that nobody else will recognize it as well, at least right now, because of right now I don't have a chance uh, to go this route. I have to finish what I started and then later I'll find the time and way how to leave it, you know, let it go somehow. Mm -hmm. But now, um, especially in the morning, if it happens, I don't remember, I, I'm trying to think when that might happen, something like that. But yeah, I think usually you may feel like that in the evening. It's much easier. 
mm-hmm. then in the morning. Morning usually, and I'm an early bird person. I really like morning. So morning is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think the difference is sometimes at the start of the day as well is is your team and your people and it sounds like you're very you take a lot of time to um have that personal connection with your people um and I think that's you know particularly if you're a morning person I mean that that's um part of why I I really enjoy what I do um but I love coming I'm only in the office twice a week otherwise I work remotely and um you know even whether it's a an online meeting or an in-person meeting, seeing my colleagues, speaking to my colleagues, if I am feeling a little bit verging on red, instantly speaking to a colleague or seeing a colleague straight away, I'm you know I'm all good. Um, which which is um, which I think makes such a big difference, doesn't it? The people that you work with and that you're around. After all, you spend more time with your work colleagues than you do anyone else. That's true. Uh, it's a third, third of your life, no? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So it's a very important part. And therefore, I, every time, for example, I'm very conscious in hiring just because of that. And for example, in when I choose uh, the place where I'd like to work, because of the third of my life, I think it's, it's a lot. You don't have to spend it with people who you don't want to be with. Yeah, no, absolutely, hundred um, percent. And and we're we're the same here. You know, would much hi- rather in terms of hiring, put cultural fit, personality fits above experience and skills because you can teach that. Um, and I think it's really important. In many places, it is like that. I believe there are there might be some exceptions, but mm. uh, um, on general, in general, maybe up to ninety percent, I would say yes. Cultural fit mm-hmm. plays much uh, significant uh, role in that. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, brilliant. Um, so probably my last question, unless you have any questions after this, is um, any, w- yeah, what what advice would you give our listeners? Um, and, and I don't know whether that's kind of any uh, recommendations around resources that you've used, any kind of good podcasts that you listen to, good books that you've listened to, uh, sorry, read, or, um, you know, just any personal experiences um, and advice to um, for aspiring leaders that are looking to follow in your footsteps or that are already on that kind of path and journey? Yeah, I think as we as we discussed, I think earlier, I think it, it would be not very, not, it would be, it would be not, it wouldn't be fair to give a um, single book or something and uh, here you go. That's the, the way you will become like this or like that. We all have unique path. We all have unique uh, combination of genes and therefore we are different people. You need to find your way, I think. You, you need to find your own way and be open for everything. Do, use everything. Read books. Listen books as well. The, nowadays you can listen to them, you write. So, uh, yes, uh, go for conferences, uh, mm-hmm. uh, listen to podcasts, uh, join different networks. But as I, as I mentioned earlier, I think yeah, you also, by the way, you can also, I believe, uh, ask around in your current company. There might be a, a person who wants to be a mentor and you can ask for mentorship. Uh, you can ask for shadowing. Uh, there are tons of opportunities. It's not the way that, oh, there is only one book you need to read and then you become uh, this person. Not, not at all. Mm-hmm. But you need to start from yourself. That's my uh, biggest take. You need to start from yourself. You need to understand who you are and what do you want. Mm-hmm. And like you mentioned before, treat people like you want to be treated, right? Therefore, start from that, understand who you are. Mm-hmm. Everything else is just a matter of time. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. My motto has always been um, just be yourself, be who you are, be yourself and, uh, you know, and, and, and do your best. And that's all you can do. True. Um, agree. <laughs> cool. Fantastic. Um, I've really, really enjoyed the conversation today. Um, I've um, per- I personally um, I've definitely taken one or two things. I'm going to take two, one or two things to our business and team here. So thank you very much. You've already added some value. Um, so 
if our um, listeners and, and viewers wanted to get in touch with you, um, once they've listened to this podcast, um, you know, you may have people wanting to get in touch with you for, um, you know, mentorship or just connecting with you, sharing, exchanging ideas, experiences, um, or potentially even to join your team. Um, what's the best way for them to reach you? I think LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the... Uh... Thanks for listening to our latest Let's Talk Leadership, the Culture Reddit Reloaded podcast. If you are a leader interested in being on the hot seat, contact me via LinkedIn. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care and see you all soon. Thank you.